So security has been in the news a lot lately. Uh, we've had some pretty big breaches uh, that have concerned people. We've had everything from uh, big ransomware attacks to uh, information stolen off of cloud servers to uh, everything you can imagine. Uh, obviously, the, uh, the political, state-sponsored, and all sorts of all sorts of incidents. Uh, from the defender perspective, from the, the enterprise perspective, I would say that there is only one reason, there's only one cause for being breached, hacked, have data exfiltrated. Uh, and that is what we in the business refer to as stupidity. And uh, without making anyone feel bad, nearly Every attack, when it's analyzed at the root cause of why did the attack succeed, it's because the defender did something that was completely and utterly avoidable. Uh, they failed to install patches that had been available. They failed to change default passwords on equipment from admin, admin. Uh, we all read about that one, I think. Uh, the, um, uh, the servers down, was it Argentina? that were, were left that way and so they could backdoor into a, a multinational corporation. You have uh, social engineering. Uh, there was a great, um, uh, it wasn't the next KCD, it was, it was a, a uh, Saturday morning breakfast cereal of someone calling an office and saying, hi, I'm from the county password inspection department. And you know, someone's saying, oh yeah, how can I help you? You know, we've got so, it, it, it's, you have misconfigured devices, you have, uh, so many problems, and one of the tools that's available uh, in to, to build into the technology that you use, not necessarily for the defenders to use directly, but it's embedded in the products that they use, is artificial intelligence. When you have you know, hundreds of thousands of new malware variants emerging every day, when you have very subtle attack patterns uh, going on against enterprise assets, whether it's from external whether it's through credentials theft, whether it's from uh, an insider attack. Uh, there is no way in most organizations uh, the CISO and the CISO teams can go through and look for patterns and try to, or go through and test the defenses. You know, when in physical security, if you have a big warehouse, somebody walks around and checks to make sure at night that all the doors are locked, that the fire doors haven't been propped open. Uh, that the windows are secured. Someone actually does that. Uh, they don't just trust you know, the electronic systems. And in businesses today, um, there are AI tools that will, for example, test to make sure that your, your firewall is secure, you know, the ports are closed properly, that, uh, that your servers and your applications are, are not open, that, that the binaries are at the correct patch level. There are plenty of tools to help you. Many of them uh, AI focused, we're gonna be talking about them tonight, whether it's machine learning or neural networks. Uh, you have companies, I'm, you know, I'm sure all of you have heard of Silence uh, that, that sell uh, antivirus tools. Uh, they use uh, machine learning to study, um, to look very quickly at every email attachment and just say, green light, it's safe, red light, it's, it's, it's suspicious, it's malicious. Uh, there's no way that could be done with hundreds of thousands of new pieces of malware every day unless you use AI techniques. And so what we have here in our panel are people who are using AI uh, in their technology or in their practice uh, you know, to offer out to enterprise customers to help keep them safe, perhaps to keep their customers' customers safe. And so what I'm gonna do is rather than my introducing the panel, I'd like to, to pass them, uh, the microphone down to them, let them introduce themselves and briefly say uh, who they are, uh, what their company is and basically does, and just a minute, uh, quickly, about how AI is part of that solution or part of their practice. And then we'll dig deeper, but let's just kind of set, set the stage here. So does my little mic work? Yep, okay. Hi, I'm Allison Miller. Uh, I build and operate large-scale detection systems. I'm a product manager at Google right now, so the detection systems that I work on are focused on finding web-based threats, that's with the safe browsing suite of products. Um, we're looking for web-based threats so that we can prevent ordinary people from uh, stumbling up upon 
online malware or, or phishing attacks that may be looking to take advantage of them. And I also do some work with our threat intel team that is looking at more persistent threats um, that are headed into Google or are targeted, are targeted attacks against Google or Google customers. My name is Ali Mezdak. I'm a director of engineering and R&D at Proofpoint. Um, the division that I work in is digital risk. We look at trying to protect a company's brand outside of their firewall. So it's a little bit uh, different than traditional security roles, which are usually firewall and internal. We're outside of the firewall. We cover things like the web, um, social media, the dark net. These are the areas that we look at uh, trying to create solutions for and protect companies from threats in that space. I'm Terry Ray. Uh, I would say we're just about the opposite, right? So, you know, we're, while well, at the end of the day, we're looking at things that do come in from the outside, the predominance of the activity that we see from an insider threat perspective and from a machine learning or an AI perspective tends to focus on things that happen on the inside. So when we look at technology, we say, how do people know what type of information people are touching? Are they touching sensitive data? Are they touching data that's important to you? You know, I, I, Edward Snowden's been used over and over and over and over again. But the reality is, is it's hard to predict what people are going to do. And there's so many different policies and things that you would have to create to predict every single outcome of every single thing that every single user or application can do in your environment that machine learning helps our technology and our, our cut users, if you will, do something and identify things that are unpredictable, but recognize that this is something that shouldn't be happening in the environment on the inside. Um, I gotta turn this okay. on. Uh, my name is Randy Dean. Uh, I'm a partner at a applied AI agency called Launchpad.ai. Everything we do is artificial intelligence. We're often uh, the tip of the spear in bringing AI into enterprises. Uh, a lot of the things that are happening at the enterprise level uh, in the AI space are bespoke development of applications. Uh, and we have done work in cybersecurity looking at uh, networks and uh, network topologies, waveforms of networks, and trying to use AI to determine the onset of things like uh, denial of service attacks. Uh, we also have worked more broadly in security applications around things like uh, facial recognition um, and video analysis, so identifying uh, potential malfeasance in real time uh, or people loitering in malls, things like that. So different kinds of uh, security uh, as well that we're working on. Okay, thank you. So let me ask a question of, of you here in the audience. How many of you work for an organization that has a chief information security officer or CISO? Okay, that's a pretty, pretty good percentage. Uh, that lets me kind of know the scale of your organization, but also how seriously you take uh, security, if security is just a function that, that falls into the routine uh, sysadmin role, then, then um, you're basically not prepared for what's going on today. You know, it's interesting, last week I was uh, conducting a panel and I had people on the panel from the Secret Service, FBI, and Homeland Security. And what they were talking about as, a, as one of the biggest threats, and we all know this, was ransomware, uh, which usually comes in via email, but not exclusively. And the ransomware, um, because you don't want to have a, a, a malicious email attachment, because that gets picked up, it somehow tricks you into downloading something which is malicious. And remember, I talked about hundreds of thousands of new variants every day. Uh, it can be hard to get them. So I'd like to ask my panel, um, first of all, how big do you see ransomware? Oh, oh, the FBI guy said that in the past couple of years, ransomware jumped from being the 22nd biggest source of malware attacks, and now it's number five. So they're seeing a huge growth. And so, so to the panel, uh, what are you seeing in terms of ransomware as a, as a threat <laughs> and AI and other tools as the way to, to deflect those attacks? Sure, I'll take it. So, you know, we, we see ransomware all the time. I think it was 2015 that was the big driver for healthcare and ransomware within healthcare. This year we saw it a little bit with WannaCry and some of the others, but I think the big challenges that people are running into is when we think about Ransomware, we immediately think about files, and files are important, and that's where people tend to focus, but it's not just files. It's also databases in many cases where people are 
you know, talking about Mongo and, and Hadoop and others in online cloud that they've deleted. At the end of the day, when we think about machine learning in this, again, it's back to being able to predict what someone's going to do. So if somebody's going to go in and touch files, how do you know somebody's not supposed to access five files? How do you know they're not supposed to access 5,000 files? And how do you know they're not touching files that are files that don't belong to their department? So you know, one of the things that we've seen people leverage, and we leverage as well, is we leverage machine learning to create what's called peer groups. And so we say, look, I can't tell you every single person who's supposed to access this file, but I can tell you that the people in this department, this department, and that department all do, in fact, access that, that file. And over time, I can start to build a predictive model that says these are the people that do commonly access this, and ransomware is likely going to fall well outside that model, but it's going to say it's going to access not only that file share, but probably any file share it can have access to. So we do it a number of different ways with the machine learning model that allows us to do it in an automated fashion, but we have other technologies as well that feed into that to help predict that. I think with the, uh, one last point, I think when we think about ransomware, it's not just about being able to detect what ransomware, that ransomware has infected somebody, anti-malware and these sorts of things, but I think it goes beyond that to start to detect what is ransomware actually doing in the environment. Assuming you're going to get infected, can you detect what happens during an, effect, an infection? So we, for example, we don't care if you get infected. We assume you're going to get infected. And we just don't worry about it. We say, what happens when you get infected? And we need to be able to detect the actual result of an infection and then stop that. And that's what we use machine learning to do is create those peer groups and understand that analysis between user to user and group to group. Okay, so, what you, so, so if I understand what you're saying, you're saying that you assume, which is the right thing to do, you assume that, that a particular employee, high-level employee, at some point is going to get nailed. And what you need to do is, is prevent the damage, the exfiltration, or the, in the case, the, the encryption or destruction of the data. So we're seeing ransomware become destructive, not just encrypting. And so you basically say, okay, so if the CFO gets, gets nailed, um, you know, they, they can't go erase all the files. I think in a perfect world, in, in a world with an unlimited budget, you would have anti-malware, antivirus, and the capacity to do the machine learning that I talked about. I think in the world we live in, people don't always have those budgets, so they have to pick their poison and decide where they're going to apply their security. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else want to talk about ransomware? I'm not sure I want to talk about ransomware oh. specifically. No, I'm sad. I just, uh, you know, when you're looking when you're looking at information security, spam, fraud, and malware detection are sort of the canonical use cases for using something like machine learning, which is useful because a lot of malware today and other types of things like uh, spam and fraud you can catch quite a lot of it by coming up with heuristics that a human could come up with, but some of the advances in technology allow uh, you to use machine learning or AI algorithms to basically to scale up your ability to understand something is similar to something else that you already know is bad. So it's very useful for us as we continue to fight against these new variants of malware, including ones that are getting very creative about how they monetize, like the uh, like ransomware. Mm -hmm. Anyone else want to talk about ransomware or that type of thing? Yeah. So you know, my first experience with ransomware was at WebSense Labs about 14 years ago. So I think it was probably one of the first ever uh, incidents of ransomware. We were actually the first ones to coin that term. Um, at that time, where one of our you know analysts was just surfing the web and categorizing websites, and all of a sudden their you know their machine got locked up, and there was a notepad that popped up saying you know pay me money or you know you, all your files are going to just be deleted forever. So it was a very primitive version of ransomware, and it's interesting to see the evolution of it now when you look at it like 15 years later. You know, you know, when you look at the problem, you first have to think about, you know, what's the velocity and the variance that we're going to see? The economics drive it. You know, hackers are going to make money off of this. So that means more and more people are going to start pumping automation into increasing the velocity and the variance of the different types of malware, which means that you're not going to be able to detect these through traditional means. That's why, really, you need to address the problem with AI, because AI is a scale scalability solution to addressing these issues. So understanding the economics and the driving forces, you know, helps you understand what direction things are going to go in. I think uh, just broadly speaking, right, the application of artificial intelligence, it's a, it's a learning methodology. And if we, if we look at what's happening in the security marketplace and all these attacks, the common denominator is the bad actors are learning. <laughs> 
they're learning uh, about our systems, they're learning how to, uh, to counteract the countermeasures that we have. Uh, so having systems that can on their own learn and understand and get better uh, even when there's no attacks going on through things like reinforcement learning and um, adversarial learning, which is starting to happen uh, in artificial intelligence. We can build these systems to be much, much better, more proactive, uh, and outthink the bad actors at their own game, which is really the promise of artificial intelligence in this space.